right, we're getting into this Friday. Ooh, we Great. made it. Welcome to Great Day at 9A. I'm Nicole Maleffa. And I'm Caitlin Francis. <laughs> and for Scott, enjoying some vacation. Oh, we're in nice bright colors. I know. It's like we're ready for summer. We're ready for the weekend. Uh, well, we are ready for the weekend. <laughs> Do you have a lot of plans? Yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Uh, we were just talking about how it's like nonstop, right? Well, and especially, you know, taking a break with COVID and stuff, I, I find that our schedule keeps I know. just filling up like crazy. It's hard to keep up with. But that's how we lived before everything. You know oh, what I mean? I I feel like it, it accelerated. Our producer Becky says, I don't like it. <laughs> well, it's, it's one thing when you were used to kind of just slowing down, right? And yeah. just well, chilling out. Now it's like, go, I go, go. was mentioning to somebody this past week, actually, that I have to literally in my calendar block out time so that I don't schedule things. Oh, really? That's now my thing. But do you have that as like red? It's literally in black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it is uh, hopefully going to be a pretty good weekend. Melissa's going to have the latest yeah. on the forecast, so if you want to get outside, she has all the details. But we're going to get outside a little later on for Food Truck Friday. Yum, we're hungry for tacos. Are you excited about that? Uh, but first, we're going to get into our top headlines, which unfortunately, we're starting you off with the latest in Maui. At least 55 people are dead in the aftermath of that massive moving wildfire. Thousands of of others are stuck right now on that island after flames literally destroyed a historic town and leveled more than 1,000 buildings. Maui is not that big, people. Mm. This is so impactful. And one of those who are actually stuck is a woman from Connecticut by the name of Susan Humanick. And she is trying to get to the western side of the island, but right now she's stranded in the highway in her car because police aren't allowing anyone to pass unless they're emergency personnel. We have elderly people, pregnant women, children. You know, I need medication. I'm not the only one. And Humanic tells us that there are some buses that are taking people to their hotels to get their IDs and their passports, but a ride is not guaranteed. She was there on vacation, by the way. Wow. Hawaii's governor says that this is the worst natural disaster in the state's history, and it will take billions of dollars to rebuild. So as any new information comes along about the fire and the recovery efforts, we're going to have it all for you on air as well as on the Channel 3 app. And New Haven police are working with the FBI to try and find whoever hacked the city. They literally hacked the city. Yeah, so they got away with six million dollars in a massive cyber attack. We've been following this story since yesterday morning. Police say hackers got into the New Haven School Chief Operating Officer's email account back in June. So they made six transactions to steal that money from the school district. So far, about three and a half million dollars has been recovered and just to be clear they don't think that this was any kind of inside job so no school officials or um, city officials mm -hmm. are suspected in this case um, and they're also saying that it's not going to affect the school budget in any exactly. way. Exactly. I'm guessing that this kind of money of is insured money. in some way. But still, six million dollars <laughs> to just disappear. Yeah. I mean, over six transactions. That's a I know. Scary. Yep. Scary, scary. But, you know, I'm okay if we hack the weather and make sure this rain goes away, Melissa. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> we definitely don't need it. <laughs> no, and I'm okay to be here and enjoy the food truck Friday, too. I'm very excited. Exactly. Oh, and you can I'm eat outside. it, I think, yes. right? I'm excited. All right, so it's beautiful out, guys. We have our new London ICAM, 74 degrees right now, not a cloud in the sky. Winds are out of the northwest to 12, and those northwesterly breezes are keeping the humidity nice and low today, so enjoy it. Lots of people probably heading to Old Saybrook to go to the beach today equally as nice so enjoy it now we have issued an alert for tomorrow really tomorrow night we have the chance for some strong to severe thunderstorms the threat is greatest in central and western connecticut especially western connecticut there could be some damaging wind gusts downpours and hail but as you're planning out your weekend a lot of the daytime hours tomorrow will be dry it's really not till after six that we're concerned about some storm so keep that in mind for your outdoor plans tomorrow night you may need to move inside but today no need to move inside enjoy the outside temperature Temperatures today will climb to about 80 to 85 for your uh, daytime highs with plenty of sunshine. We'll drop down into the 70s by 7 p.m. tonight. I'll be back in the next half hour, guys, with a little bit more. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Well, we all have just two more days left before all of the Christmas tree shops in our state close for good. This is the end of an era, Kate. I know. I used to love going to Christmas tree shop. Like, love it.
There are four locations across Connecticut. The chain based in Massachusetts declared bankruptcy back in May. So tomorrow, as Nicole just mentioned, the last day to shop at all the stores here in Connecticut. Every store is offering big discounts to get rid of as much product as possible. The location of Manchester is promoting price cuts of up to 90 percent. Wow. I don't think there's much left on the shelves. <laughs> no. There's also stores in Danbury Orange and Waterford. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I know we were talking about the Cape this morning mm -hmm. or, uh, during the morning show because um, I think we've got a somebody's taking a trip to Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, it's iconic, the Christmas tree shop heading onto the Cape. Yeah. It's become such a tradition for people vacationing in New England. You yeah. know, you got to stop at the Christmas tree shop. You see the signs yeah. along the highway. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really sad. But I know that there are a couple of the locations in Massachusetts that will still be open, but I, all of the locations here in Connecticut. Yeah. Sad. Well, all right, heads up. Watching your favorite Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel content? Guess what? It's going to cost you more. No, please, just make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> like everything else. Uh, I know. And all of you Bluey families out there, I know my son's watching right now. We love Bluey. Um, you are going to have to give up some more dollar bucks. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a little reference there. Uh, Disney is planning to increase prices for the Disney Plus streaming service. So this starts October 12th. The monthly cost for the ad-free version of Disney Plus will now be going from $10.99 to $13.99. And Hulu's ad-free package will go from $14.99 to $17.99. So that's wow. a $3 increase as well. And Disney is saying that the service is losing subscribers and is just not making a profit. Well, um, I mean, you're probably losing subscribers because it's costing too much money. That is a very valid point. So <laughs> I think you should take that up with Disney. <laughs> but you know, it's so interesting. There's so many cable cutters out there now, especially our generation. Most people only have streaming services. But the funny thing is, the amount of money that you're paying for all of these streaming services. It costs the same. It, or if not more, more. than cable. Yep. So it's kind of interesting. But. Yeah, because people are kind of cherry picking what they want to stream, but they're streaming almost everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how it does much cost are a lot. people really using when you have like five or six different streams? I don't platforms. know, I and mean, we talk about this a lot. I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's on TV, but she doesn't watch it. <laughs> I, you know, everybody who's like, you, "Have you seen this show?" I have not. I, I know. I say I'll catch up when the kids turn like 18. But so I have a little bit of time. I do know that people enjoy binge watching things and they have their favorite shows. So maybe people are watching. I don't know. Well, I hope people are watching the UConn women's because basketball team because they have some exciting news coming up this year. Paige Beckers is now fully cleared to play. I know we had bad news, more bad news, but now we've got some good news. Mm -hmm. Yes, Beckers tore her ACL last August. She missed the entire last season for the Huskies, but Beckers herself announced on social media she's been cleared, so this is awesome. She missed last season. Most of the season before, you might remember, because of a different injury to the same knee. Well, getting back on the court sets up the dynamic duo with AZ Fudd. Fans have been waiting two years to see mm -hmm. UConn is headed to Europe this month for a four city three country tour with exhibition games in Croatia, Slovenia, and Italy. So good luck to the, to the women, and we can't wait to see them back on the court here in Connecticut. Yeah, so I think we need to make some time to watch them. Yes, <laughs> and speaking of, Channel 3 is a proud partner with UConn Athletics, and you can see some of the games this season on our sister station, The Wax. You don't have to stream, you can just watch. Along with women's basketball, we'll have brand new shows with the football team and Coach Mora and the men's basketball team as well. That is super, super exciting. And then tonight on Channel 3, we are going to be checking in with Coach Gino and the players to see how they plan to rebound this season. I think it's going to be a pretty good season, though, with the dynamic duo yeah. back in action. And it's great because um, AZ Fudd and Paige Beckers were at the Travelers for the Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about this, you know, when they would be back on the That's court awesome. together. Everyone has been waiting for it. Long time coming, but it's here, folks. Very good. Coming